Hello and welcome everyone, my name is The Clever Fool. Today I'll be playing the third and final episode of a custom campaign called The Jarls of Yelling. Pretty solid campaign set so far. What I really like about it is that it features castle age, naval, and uh, infantry combat, which is pretty cool. Also, the Vikings are super cool as well. This last episode features Svein Forkbeard, who uh, betrayed his own father. So let's go ahead and get right started then, shall we? Deep determination is written on the faces of the men mustered under the shade of some tussled pine tree. They had incurred the hardships of a long, arduous sea voyage to free their prince, Svein Forkbeard. To this man, these warriors had sworn allegiance, even if there were many in their homeland who did not regard Svein as the legitimate heir to the throne, since he had rebelled against his father. But what use is it to rehash this old story? Harold is gone, and now all the lands he had taken by sword are in turmoil. The Norwegian Jarls and Swedish noblemen already sensed their chance to free themselves from Danish rule. The Empire of the Yellings is on the verge of decay, and there can only be one man capable of renewing it, Svein Forkbeard. But Svein is deprived of his capacity to act. He has been duped by the devious Joms Vikings and dragged into the land of the Slavs. As an ordinary prisoner, he is now condemned to see the young Danish Empire fall, unless the cunning and determined band of intrepid warriors gathering in the forests along the coast manage to rescue him. Men, the rumors seem to be true. Our prince is being held prisoner in the Jomsborg. We must free him to restore his honor and our dignity. That's a lot of enemies, though. Hrani, my brother, I have explored the surrounding area. There are two small settlements that supply the Yams Vikings with resources. I suggest we capture those before marching on the Yamsburg. Yamsborg. Okay, so these guys are just running plus one upgrades. That's good to know. Got. That is how we're going to do it. The devious Yams Vikings will soon regret their foolish actions. For Spain! Okay, our main objectives are to capture the Yamsborg castle by garrisoning at least 10 soldiers in it to free Zvain's fork beard from captivity. Our secondary objectives are to capture the lumberjack settlement by destroying the enemy tower in the settling, and to capture the mining settlement by destroying the enemy tower in the settling. Our hints tell us that, well, there's a lot. Chapter one, the Yams Vikings. Since you are far from your hometown yelling, your population is limited to 75, wow. As long as you have not captured a settlement from the Yams Vikings, you can only construct very few types of buildings, and yet you can have no more than three villagers at the same time. No shot. Only after conquering one or more settlements will you be allowed to construct additional military buildings. The soldiers who follow Hrani are not titled men of noble origin, but simple and determined warriors. You can train woad raiders in your barracks and longbowmen in your archery range. To free Svein Forkbeard, you must storm the Yams Vikings fortress. Make sure that the Yams Vikings no longer receive any resource replenishments by conquering settlements they control. If you attack the castle too early, the resistance will be very strong. And then chapter 2, back in Jutland. Once you return to Yelling, your new population limit will be 150. You will now be able to construct buildings as normal again, although you will not be able to build new castles and docks for the time being. Throughout the entire scenario, you will not be able to build walls and you cannot advance to the Imperial Age. The waters on the west coast of Mutland are too deep for docks to be built there. As soon as you can build additional docks, you can only place them on the eastern banks. Should you be forced to take the fight to Sweden, plan your invasion well. Find a suitable landing site and take some villagers with you to set up a forward base. Note that building space will be very limited. In the event that the Norwegian upstart Olaf Turigvasen allies with your enemies, do not rush against him. Should he set up a sea blockade, do not attack it until the time is right. Chapter 3 to Norway. Without his prestigious flagship, the Great Serpent, Olaf's fleet will be a far less terrifying opponent. Find the Great Serpent and sink this mighty battleship before invading Norway. Remember to take villages with you again in order to set up a base in Norway. 
However, Olaf has horsemen carrying torches, Tarkins probably, who can burn buildings in a short time. Train appropriate counter units to deal with this threat. You do not have to destroy Olaf's entire infrastructure to take back Norway. It is enough to kill Olaf. If their leader is killed, his men will give up fighting. Your scouts report that Svein Forkbeard's loyal follower, Hrani, has set out for the land of the Yams Vikings to free the kidnapped prince who is said to be in the hands of the mercenaries. Hrani commands a small force of infantry and archers in blue. Unnoticed by the Yams Vikings, they have already taken control of a small coastal settlement that serves as a temporary base. From their imposing fortress, the Jomsborg, the Yams Vikings in orange, control the Slavic east of the map, including two neutral settlements. The Yams Vikings army consists of berserks, swordsmen, and archery units. The Swedish lands to the north are ruled by Erik Segersal, a Jarl who is said to have a keen interest in ending Danish hegemony over the Baltic region. Erik in red may be involved in Svein Forbeard's kidnapping. His army consists of berserks, huskarls, mounted archers, and swordsmen. The Swedes also have a large fleet of longboats. Since Harald's Bluetooth days, since Harald Bluetooth days, Norway has been under Danish rule. However, rumor has it that a jarl named Olaf Tryggvason in Sion has set out to rebel against the Danes. Olaf, who is said to be the great grandson of the legendary Harald Finehair, can count on a sworn following consisting of woad raiders and knights. Because of his wealth, Olaf is said to have an extremely powerful fleet at his disposal, too. Alright, let's get this party started, shall we? I'm gonna move these guys off wood and instead put them on food so we have two on food and one on gold here why do we always have to go on campaigns in the dead of winter i swear i will complain about this on our next thing don't ask me what thing is referring to here for i do not know Nice, we got a berserk converted on our side here. It's very good. I think the key here is to use our longbowman to bait enemies in and then finish them off with our melee units while the melee units or while the their melee units are distract it okay and while the villagers are gathering we can heal up and pick up blacksmith upgrades at these resources that we're getting. Did I lose a longbowman? I think I must have lost a longbowman. That is unfortunate. I'm gonna go ahead and move this villager back to wood for the time being. But having two longbowmen will still be more than enough. We just need to capture the lumberyard here and we'll be able to get more of these guys. They're very effective baiters here. That's good. Like in this early stage guerrilla style combat here. I'd like to pick up infantry upgrades if possible. Let's have our scout move in. 
Enemy warriors sighted in the mountain pass. Release the watchdogs. Watchdogs. Looks like I can't convert the doggo hero. Picked ourselves up in archer conversion though. But we also lost a woad raider. And I think we lost the swordsman that we converted. That's unfortunate. Losses are an inevitable part of warfare though, so I can't say I'm too cut off by this. I see warriors roam about the forest who don't belong here. Quick, prepare our ballistas. <laughs> All right, looks like their ballistas were prepared. Let's heal up. Keep baiting units in from here. Alright, overall a good trade there. I'd like to get more of these armor upgrades here. Which is why I rotated my villager back to food. Berserk obtained, very good. Any other berserks for us to convert here? Probably not. Let's just go directly to this tower to capture it. I like the little dink dink noises that the miners are creating. This gold miner can go to fish now. I think we're gonna capture this camp soon enough. As soon as this tower comes down, I expect these villagers to join our side. Five hundred gold, one twenty-five stone. Can now build extra barracks, ranges, and siege workshops. Very good. I think just having four on the gold is fine. And we can actually retask these villagers to do other things, since we probably don't need all this gold all at the same time. Let's try to bait out the scorpions. Suffered some losses here, but that's okay. You can always retrain some more later. There should be no more enemies left here, right? 
Feels like we baited them all. Very good. And this whole time, we're gathering a bunch more gold. Let's instead transition over to food. Since we have plenty of gold already. What do I want to get next? I want to get all these blacksmith texts while I'm still in chapter one here. Maybe even pick up the mill text too. I'm not in a huge rush to complete this particular leg of the mission yet. The lumber camps are ours. Without wood supplies, the Yams Vikings will no longer be able to train archers. Okay, that's good. Let's pick up iron casting. And use this opportunity to maybe train a couple battering rams. Nice, didn't even take damage from that raiding party at all. Very good. Let's pick up leather archer armor and squires. Whatever text that we can research now, we should try to research. I think we might have lost that archer that we converted. Again, not a big problem. We do need to think about training replacements, though. Replacements, soldiers, so that we can garrison them inside the castle. Okay, this is fine. Let's get chain barding armor. Pick up elite skirmisher. Train up some longbowmen here. I think getting a block of longbowmen here will be the answer. Okay, just took the one shot. We can preemptively research heavy plow even here. Huh. Wonder why that gate was on fire. 
Yeah, what caused that gate to be on fire, actually? Like, actually, though. It's definitely not the Rams that did it. Can we convert this guy? Join us! Good. That was getting worrisome for a little bit. Let's get fish with these guys. Don't hop in too far here. Okay, we got all the smithy techs that we can need. Let's research light cavalry so we don't have to later. Start taking out these buildings. There is a boar and some fish over here, so I will mill that area. Actually, a board's a fish over here already. We need thumb ring, but we need the food to get thumb ring. Let's have these vills up here switch to food, actually. There's lots of fish to be fished up there. Still short on food for thumb ring, still need this pikeman upgrade. Uh, but otherwise, I think we're good. Quick, let us get inside the castle to free Svein. Need to break it to you, but that's not my highest priority right now. Sure, we'll get town patrol. I think my priority for these texts is not the greatest, but that's fine. Good bait. That is a lot of enemy units to bait out. Let's come back, have our hero get healed up. Let's do thumbring here. Let's not let Harani die. Got a conversion off. Very good. Run down this one longbowman. And then retreat. Also very good. Pick up Pikeman Tech. Get our guy back, please. Thank you. Seems like that didn't gather a reaction, so I'm just going to go forward and ram them down now. We'll get a third ram just for good measure here. 
maybe even a fourth, just to act as a good buffer zone. I think we got pretty much every tech that we possibly could get. Black up. Mill, university, towers, yeah, this is good. Is this stock untargetable? Looks like it's untargetable. Okay, let's bait these losers out. Okay, 15 soldiers running under this castle fire. We'll bait them with rams first. By baiting them with rams, we prevent our soldiers from taking too much damage. And we can try to have them garrison inside the castle now. Search the entire castle. Svein must be locked up here somewhere. Cool sound effects. We have searched every room and every corner, Hrani, but Svein is nowhere to be found. You won't find your prince here, Danes. Explain yourselves, you scum. Where is Svein? It is true we kidnapped your prince, but we only kept him briefly in our castle. We acted on behalf of Eric Zegersal, king of the Swedes. If you want to free your prince, you will have to search for him in Sweden. There, Eric Zegersal keeps Svein prisoner in his castle. Oh great, your prince is in another castle. Amazing. There he is. Okay. Right? For telling us the truth, we will let you live, even though you mercenary scum actually deserved something else. Come on, men, let us get back to yelling. We have to prepare a campaign to Sweden. Seems like we're transitioning to chapter two now. Men, we will sail to Sweden to free our prince. Eric Zegersal will soon regret his shameful intrigue bitterly. Bad news, Ronnie. Eric Zegersal stole a march on us. While you were fighting the Yams Vikings, Eric's men disembarked on the northern shores of Jutland and captured one of our Coltstow fortresses. What a humiliation! But Eric will not enjoy this triumph for long. Let us drive back these vermin into the sea. Or drive these vermin back into the sea. Okay, so this is good. So we have new objectives, which is to freeze Vein Forkbeard. And fortunately, we have all of our text research now. Use a demolition ship to clear the blockade. My husband, the lord of this fjord, died fighting Eric's men. We want to bury him according to the old traditions in a boat but that, that we push out to sea and then set alight, but the waves were too strong and the boat drifted away too fast without us being to ignite it. Can you help us and set the boat on fire before it is out of reach? Sure I can. Let's get a second town center going. Q 
keep fishing ships coming out. I want to develop my eco as much as possible. So I don't think I'm going to be able to build docks on the west side here. Fortunately, that isn't too much of a problem. Where's where'd my scout cavalry go? Let's have this archer come over here and do the fire setting. And I would also like to mine out this stone if I can. There's my scout making an appearance. Are these guys just super resistant? Okay, it's fine. Oh, that's lovely. My husband has now found eternal rest. Thank you. I will tell of your good deed everywhere. Ensure that more warriors will join you. Conscription research. That's good. Could use some pikemen. Get some more vills out. That's Ronnie's longboat, so it's a special longboat. Oh, I lost my villager. I forgot that I sent her out. That was a foolish mistake to be set to be sure. I need food gatherers here. Let's build that demolition ship. Cute villagers coming out. Let's scout this area. Looks like a gold pile over here. Let's grab one monk. Keep training Lombowmen. And keep training soldiers as well. Oh! Uh. Let's repair up this TC here. Rip Rani, sorry buddy. Okay, so that was rough, to say the least. Why are they coming out in that direction? I do not know. Blockage has been removed. Perfect. I can now build additional docks. Okay, 
Okay, there is a relic up there. Okay, our next priority should be getting more soldiers back up. I need gold miners here. I'm gonna see if I can transport back in this direction. Get a colony started on the other side here. Am I seriously not allowed to transport over here? Is there some kind of like invisible wall that prevents me from unloading here? Looks like it, unfortunately. Well, that stinks. Let's get a network of docks out in this shallow area here. And go for more berserks. I don't want to deal with more enemies than I have to. We should also get a university up. And train up some more longboats. I thought I could cheese the mission a little bit, unfortunately. I guess I was wrong. Let's get more pikemen. Pikemen aren't going to be the greatest. Um, I think straight up just raw berserks and world raiders will be the best. Here comes the next wave. You love to see it, you hate to see it. Yeah, longbowmen alone are not going to do this job. I need more melee units. Yeah. 
We're losing housing. And we need we need more boats. Need careening here. Let's keep longbowman production coming out. They produce a lot of rams. Don't want monks. I keep selecting this castle or this monk monastery by accident. But I need food. One, two, three, more farms. More longbows. More longboats. I am suddenly low on wood. Let's fix that. Here comes the next wave. Ready. Oh my. That's so many enemies, man. I just lost a crap ton of Lombelmen. It's no good. I think it's because I haven't been using my castle. I got greedy by moving to the front here. Yeah. 
Dude, there's so many enemies, man. I don't see how you're supposed to be able to overcome this. I'm pretty much spending all my resources just trying to stay afloat here. Is it seriously like that I just need to survive the waves with my castle? Because even with the castle, I feel like eventually I'm just getting overrun here. I can't tell if I'm just like playing this poorly or what. I feel like I'm losing a lot of villagers at the front. So that could be contributing to the problem. I was hoping I'd be able to transport to this side to have a bit of a safe space, but no. Like, I can't even push, let alone survive. Or survive, let alone push. I guess I just really am misusing this, this part of the map here.
Yo, the waves just don't stop coming, man. I have no gold income anymore. Fortunately for us, it seems like the waves aren't actually getting too much stronger. The problem is we like, we actually have to survive the waves, you know? I'm just constantly taking L's here right now. Sometimes it really do be like that though. I guess the best we can do is just continue grinding away here. Maybe instead of archers, I should be producing skirmishers, like elite skirms. Have like a big fighting force or something. So starved for building space right now. And it's partially because there's just so many of these longboats too. Here comes the next wave. Are we even prepped for it? Let's retreat and fight under the castle. I <laughs> find it hilarious that these longbowmen are actually living. Can't even get murder holes. I mean, I guess pikemen and skirms are the answer here. At least until further notice. Just look at how many freaking longboats these guys have. At least we have this relic. That's one upshot of this whole scenario. We pretty much have to come out here and burst and mine gold and bursts. Yeah. 
Okay, let's go see what sort of enemies we're dealing with here. This fortress is ours now. Your efforts are futile. I guess we'll see about that. Okay, looks like the enemy has opted not to attack just yet. I am okay with this arrangement. Especially as we try to get back on the water here. I need heated shot. Let's get heated shot, follow that up with ballistics. Build long boats. Okay, this fight looks like it's gone better for us. That is not what I meant to do. I hate that so much, man. Let's bait him back in range of this guard tower. Yeah. 
Queen. Okay, things still look pretty crappy for us. Uh, we need to push out and grab this gold somehow or another. Scarps actually perform pretty well against these guys because they only have one plus one. Okay, this is where we make our comeback, ladies and gents. We're gonna make a big swarm of longboats. We'll survive the enemy's next attack. Let's get some more housing online. Our pop cap was what? 150? Okay, that's fine. That's so obnoxious, man. Okay, so I definitely can't even cap this gold. Not while these longboats are around. running out of wood to even farm up so I'm gonna switch back to light cavalry here Yeah, come right in, friends. I'm friendly, I promise. Okay, now let's push up and clear out these with our fleet. 
We have a demo ship up here that we can use as well. Okay, this is our path to victory here. Let's mine up that gold. And we'll need to maintain these fleet numbers. Without a doubt, that's going to be key to our victory here. We need to start destroying production buildings, which means I'll need to start raiding from the shoreline here. Okay, one dock at a time here. Dude, they're like constantly producing these, man. I think they must have three dock production at least. We gotta take care of all their docks. That's not negotiable. We must have water dominance if we're to succeed in our attack. Okay, that's great. That's one dock down, fortunately. Okay, now we're under attack from the land. No husk girls here. So that actually looks pretty good. Let's fend off this naval attack. Yeah, okay, this naval this naval battle is more important. Get more of these ships out. That's a second dock destroyed. Perfect. Okay, third dock. Where is the enemy's third dock? So the Danes are without a king and are beating each other's heads with the Swedes very well. Then it is past time Norway becomes independent again. Do not let any... Danish ships through anymore. These devious regions stab us in the back. Seems like we need to teach this rebel a lesson as well. Norway has been conquered by us, and it will be conquered by us again. Okay, 
Kuşaş, kuşaş mı? Okay, our resources are starting to look pretty good now. Things are starting to turn up, actually. They were looking very dire before, but now they have... The situation has improved somewhat. I think spending your gold wisely is very pivotal, this mission. Olaf Trigvassen has built a sea blockade. Our ships are too weak to break through it. We'll have to deal with this later. Oh my, yeah, those boats are definitely way too strong for us. Let's pick up Capped Ram. Okay, it looks like they're only producing from one dock though, as opposed to like the multitude of docks that we had to deal with before. Let me see if I can knock out this tower. One problem at a time here. <laughs> what the heck is up with that evil cackling? What the hell? Alright, this is good. With their TC down, they won't be able to replenish their villagers, at least from... ...this base here. Oh, now the villagers are all like sprinting out at us for some reason. You know, I won't complain. Out 
Okay, so far, this assault has gone significantly better. Except for Ram's pathfinding, man. D Ram pathfinding, dude. It's actually embarrassing how bad it is. Like, how hard is it to pathfind in the correct direction? Is it because of the flags? I can't tell if, like, the flags are legitimately the problem here. Like, actually, what is this pathfinding? They're going all the way around these gold mines. I literally just want them to go where these light cavalry went. Please. Before, like, a ram just spawns out of nowhere. Okay, there we go. Gosh darn, that was... How difficult did we have to make that? Seriously. Okay, so our next objectives are to free Svein's Swartbeard and to kill Olaf Trigson. Trigvasen. Okay, so now what? I guess we can sail up to the northeast. Try to figure out what we're doing with our lives now. Really wish we could come back here and grab those resources. It seems that Svein is not Eric's only captive. This bastard has also imprisoned the Jarl of Godaland, Olaf Scott... Scottenung. We should imprison, or we should free him too. Those red dots are the bridges are just freaking me out, man. Okay. Oh, 
Okay, I'm willing to trade some docks here. That is not an issue. I'm even willing to trade some units here, actually. It's totally fine by me. I wonder if these are the unit producing pavilions. If they are, then we should make an effort to destroy those as well. Just setting gather points here. Keep things clean. Destroy this gate here so that we're all prepped to free our homeboy Olaf Skatunung. <laughs> He's a very healthy king. He's 25 HP. Ten slots each. Fortunately, I didn't start loading these bad boys in just yet. Guess what we could do is we can send these longships back now to defend.
Alright, load up these transports. And we're going to make our way to free Olaf Skottenung, and I hope he gives us more than just his body, because pretty much lose him immediately. Get in here, please. Get in here, thank you. All right, now let's make our way over to the other side. Still doesn't seem like it's a good idea to take on this blockade. Oh my god, we just shredded those poor fools. I think they're coming from this north side here. I'm pretty sure that the east side is completely clear of docks. See that those who fight under the banner of Svein are veritable men of honor. Thank you for setting me free from the shameful captivity to clear my debt. I will join your ranks and follow you into battle. Okay, so he's basically like a bowman killer then, right? Yeah, sorry Olaf. Is that really all I'm gonna get from him? Like, just one dude? That's what I call dishonorable, man. I thought he'd give us, like, a free tech or something, at least. 
I've instructed my engineers to improve your ships, my Danish friends. Now that... That is what I'm talking about. That makes way more sense. See, this is this is what I mean when I talk about like getting something that we need. Elite longboat is amazing. Let's actually continue sailing in this direction. Elite longboats, let's go. Just melt these towers. Look at them go. Conscription, I feel like, is paying us big dividends, too. It's like a- we're like a virus. Once we get on here, you can't get rid of us. We have tons of resources. We're pretty much unkillable now. We've reached that critical turning point, so to speak. We can spam light cavalry for days. In fact, I might even want to transition to some more woodcutters here. Anything else to be had sailing all the way up the coast here? Doesn't really look like it. Maybe a relic? Nope. No reward to speak of. Oh, 
Okay, let's break these military production buildings then. I did pick up arson, yeah? I think I have it, so we should be good. So their berserks are coming from the castle, as evidence here. They have pikemen coming from the barracks. Um, but nothing super threatening, honestly. The berserks only have one plus one, so our skirms are actually able to do quite a lot of damage. I think that's something important to keep in mind here. Skirms cost only food and wood, and if you fully upgrade them, they actually have three plus two attack, so they're doing five damage per shot, even though they don't cost any gold. That was a pretty vital observation. The realization that skirmishers are actually very good against our opponents here, and extremely resource efficient as well. We've almost reached Svein. Let's tear down Eric's castle to free our prince. We have lots of rams here, lots of skirms. Let's keep producing these light cavalry. And keep throwing ourselves at our enemy here. Okay, the berserks are annoyingly effective here at destroying our rams. Okay, that's the gate down. Our population's dropping though. You shall not pass. Okay, well, uh, I didn't mean to actually trigger you there just yet, so you're gonna have to be patient for a while. 
First, let's clean up this archery range here. Yeah, no need to rush to pass that blockade. Yeah, th thanks to you, Pathfinding. I, I totally want my ramps to just sit there and do nothing. That, that's that's exactly what I wanted them to do. Yeah, I love this. This is totally not a total dry at all. One trebuchet, man. My whole kingdom for one trebuchet. At least they're cap ramps. Okay, get in here. We're about to get the job done. Oh, they're attacking my dock. Big whoop. And that's Segersol finished. Svein, we went to great trouble to get you back here. Ah, oh, finally out of this damn cage. If you had come a few hours later, I would have freed myself on my own. But thank you anyway. Now give me my axe. Time to crush some skulls. Elite Berserk research. That's not bad. Guess we can pick up chieftains now. Okay, let's break this blockade now. Nice. Having an elite longboat really helped there. I don't think we would have been able to do a great job without the elite longboat upgrade there. Okay, I'm gonna bring Svein back to Utland. Okay, let's bring these transports over to the west side. Get ourselves 
prep for additional action here. I'm going to scout somewhere in the western waters. Olaf's flagship, the Great Serpent Cruises. If we succeed in sinking this mighty war vessel, it will break the morale of Olaf's naval forces. Okay, let's go hunt down his serpent then. That's not a serpent, we can safely ignore it. I'm just gonna go check the corner of the map right away. Uh, oh, well, if that's not the serpent, I don't know what is. His boats are so much better. I kind of just gotta like duck in and take care of them. It's because he has chemistry and we don't. Oh. Okay, so... Oh, no! Oh, this is horrible. No, 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 no. Disembark, disembark, disembark. Okay, these guys are going to remain stranded inland for a little while, unfortunately. We just caught sight of the boat, 600 HP. Holy shit, this serpent is strong. Okay, we killed it though. At the cost of like our entire navy. Okay, so his navy's morale has been decreased. That's really good. I guess we can come up here and see to what extent it was decreased by. But man, we took a major beating. Okay, it downgraded his units to just regular longboats. That gives us a significant advantage. And he doesn't have chemistry on his boats anymore either. So that was actually really big for us. Okay, let's just float on up here to ensure that the ships that we just took out were the ships that took out our transports. After we ascertain that, we can, I guess, safely consider picking our units up on the west coast again. That was really scary. I could have lost my entire army here. That would have been pretty unpleasant. <clears throat> Red. 
There's probably a dock in here. Ah, these boats have chemistry. And they're elite. Uh, maybe I only weakened the ones that existed on the field? If so, that's kind of a crappy bonus. Let's just take out these docks. I feel like longboats, their advantage over war galleys is that they're really good at taking docks out. Like, if you look at the sheer number of arrows that you're just throwing at the enemy, they're pretty good at coastal raiding and at taking docks out. I will give them that. Try to take out any additional docks. I don't see very many. Once we can eliminate all the docks from Teal here, then we'll have total sea domination, I think. Or maybe destroying his navy or his serpent ship just prevents the production of new ships. That could also be it, because I haven't seen anything come out of the docks. Alright, so as our longships continue their rampage on the water, I'm just gonna load up my transport ships and prefer, uh, prepare for a landing on the enemy. Those are like really, really weak watchtowers, what the hell?
라디다 주인 라디다 우구야 <laughs> I wouldn't be cackling so hard if I were you, man. You just wiped out your whole navy. Okay, so it doesn't seem like there's going to be any more docks around. I'm just going to check the open seas real quick to see if there's anything interesting out there. He's retiring. Anything out here in the open water? Doesn't seem like it. No islands or anything of any sort. Oh, you can actually tell on the minimap that there's invisible cliffs here, so this area is locked off. And here I thought I was being cheeky by saving those resources for chapter 2. Guess I was wrong. This has been one long episode. Holy crap, I've been at this for almost two hours. I think the bulk of the difficulty lies in this second phase here, where you're surviving the initial raids from this fortress. The rams are quite brutal. Like the ram husk girl combination is really, really hard since you need to take out the rams and they have a bonus attack against your archers. Um, that being su supported by like their own archers makes things very difficult. Dude, come on, this unloading, please. Are you serious? Why would you unload there? I specifically ordered you to unload elsewhere. This is so bad. That is so scuffed. That is so incredibly scuffed. That might just be the worst landing I've ever seen. Okay, start turning out pikemen. Start building buildings here. Let's bring our long ships up here as a defensive measure, just in case. Oh, 
Queen. Buan Dia. Ja. Pusha ja. Schmister. Oh. Pusha Schmister. Alright, pikemen seem to be a good choice into these guys. Let's go for their stables here. I should be where my warriors fight and die for the Jarl. Take me to the place where the battle is the loudest. Okay, if I take Svein over, it'll boost their morale. That's actually quite smart. That is actually super smart to actually have Svein participating in the battle. He's super slow though. Did you see how slow he was walking? You need to do some cardio. Okay, we can spam light cavalry for days here, so I'm not worried. Like, we have pretty much limited res uh, limitless resources now, so as long as we eventually take down some production buildings, we're actually completely good to go. And I think I want to bring Svein over for the morale boost, too. Here he comes. found a couple mines in eastern Norway. We should burn the enemy mining camps and construct our own camps there. A capital idea, my friend. Let's go ahead and do that. Alright, Svein, get in there. Green, Alex. 
The Danes are right in front of my castle. I'm faced with ruin. Protect your king, men. If we must go down, then we will do so fighting. Blast Furnace, Bracer, and Siege Engineers research. Oh, baby. Oh, yeah. Now my, now my units are, like, super superior. Okay, I get to keep the morale boost, apparently. That was a good little test. Okay, that was good. Bringing Svein forward and having him take damage for the cause. I wish I could build castles of my own so that I can train berserks uh, close by, but I can't, unfortunately. The only place I can train them is from the home castle. I guess wood raiders are still quite good. Probably sink all these long boats as cool as they are. Sink them so that we have pop head room. Lawn wood, huh? Get some more villagers out. Let's go for the castle. And wow, the whole soundtrack has looped entirely around now. Back to the Viking's main theme. I guess it's a fitting scene to end on. Yeah, after that morale boost, the enemies really stood no chance, because then the quality of our units were higher. They already stood no chance, because we had so many resources, we just win from attrition. But especially after that boost to speed things along, it was a nice thematic touch. The hardest portion of this map is definitely front-loaded uh, during this section, like I mentioned before. If you can manage to survive that section, then you'll be good for the rest of the campaign. Oh, 
Oh, you can run. I'm gonna take my time thrashing this base. I deserve this. I worked hard for this. Um, so I think also to boost you for the second segment, you should take the time to research as many texts as you can during this first segment. Just to give you a little bit of a head start later on. Cut him down. Get him. <laughs> Olaf had to pay dearly for his ambitions. Norway is ours again. Bless. The day is ours. All hails Vane's Fortbeard, Jarl of Yelling, King of the Baltic Sea. Battle of Svolder ended with the complete annihilation of Olaf Tryggvason. Once more, the conniving Jomsviking showed their true colors and did not send the ships they had promised Olaf. Thus, the vastly outnumbered Norwegian fleet was wiped out by Svein and his Swedish allies. According to the Danish sagas, Olaf Tryggvason committed suicide by jumping into the sea, the so-called King's Leap, in order to not be captured. The Icelandic and Norwegian skalds tell the story differently. According to them, the Norwegian king may even have survived the battle. However, after the defeat in the Battle of Svald, the Norwegians no longer played any role in the Baltic Sea region. The future now belonged to Svein Soli, who would soon lead his warriors to more distant shores. In 1013, Svein succeeded in conquering England and was crowned its ruler but he only ruled for 40 days. This, however, is a different story to be told on another day. All right, nice. Uh, so overall impressions, very nice campaign featuring the Vikings. Um, I do like Castle Age combat every now and then. Um, as always with these scenarios, mixing in the ability to actually use capped rams uh, improves the experience significantly. I don't really like using rams in tight quarters. Um, and that's kind of what the scenario forces you to do because it's your only form of siege. Uh, but what I do like about the scenario is that it features the Viking longboats very well. Um, it requires you to manage your gold properly and leverage the market and the Viking economy pretty well. Uh, the mix of the Longbowmen, the Wold Raiders, um, the Huskerls, and the Throwing Axemen throughout this campaign to kind of add additional spice, as well as the, um, the Sar Sergeants, I think, and the Tarkins. Like, lots and lots of unique awesome. units from different civs were involved in this, in this, scenario, uh, this set of scenarios. But none of them really felt out of place. Um, even though I know which sieve each one comes from, they all seem, you know, they all make sense in the scheme of things. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I do also like that the attacking waves are not trivial. Um, with many campaigns that are not run on a timer, inevitably once you start stacking up resources, you kind of reach a point in the campaign where you cannot lose. Um, I feel like this set of campaigns did a very good job overall of keeping that timer pushed back as far as possible with frequent waves of ships and land invaders to keep you on your toes. Um, I think campaign one and campaign three are particularly good with this. Um, and campaign two is 
A little bit easier than the first and the third, but nonetheless still quite good. Um, what else do I have to say here? Yeah, I mean, just overall a good mix of naval and uh, naval and land combat. I do appreciate how rescuing uh, this guy got us the elite longboat upgrade needed for us to progress past this choke point here. Um, and I also really enjoyed this sea fight with the, uh, the sea serpent. That ship was super scary. It almost took out, I think, I think we were like 22 on one or 20 on one or something like that. And it took out half the Navy there by itself. So that just speaks to how powerful that ship was. It's pretty fun to fight against it. Olaf himself was uh, mostly a pushover really. But at this point I was suffering from some campaign fatigue anyway, since it's this level is so long. Um, the scenario to just capture this base could be a whole feature length scenario all on its own. But you have the initial guerrilla fighting story, story arc, followed by this story arc, where you have to capture the fortress and defend yourself from the sea and from land, followed by the rescue story arc, followed by the sea naval battle story arc, followed by the invasion and the regicide story arc. So this really, this was akin to the, one of the other campaigns that feature the Vikings where there's just a lot of stuff going on in one, on one mission. Uh, it certainly feels very unique and I think it, it does the big world justice. The map is really large, but at the same time, it also felt quite cramped because of uh, the way that the Navy was set up and because of all the features on the map. Uh, I actually did like that aspect. What I didn't really like was, I guess it would have been cool if I was able to utilize this gold over here uh, and this stone as well, having sort of earned it with the foresight of not consuming it. But I can see why for balance reasons this area is blocked off because it would be a completely safe place to gather resources for us. And it would kind of take out uh, a lot of the challenge from the meatiest part of the scenario, which again is this chapter two part. Overall, I'd rate the scenario quite highly. I, I liked it a lot. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's quite unique in the sense that it definitely doesn't feel like a standard, like a non DLC or a non custom scenario. It definitely doesn't feel like a real scenario in the sense that it takes some more creative liberties. Um, but all the same, it's a very solid build and destroy style mission. Uh, so I had a lot of fun with it, and uh, thank you, I believe it's Filthy Delphia for creating this one. Let me just check that real quick. Return to main menu. Mods. URLs of yelling. Not, so not Filthy Delphia, but Bassy AOC. So sorry, Bassy. Um, I do know that you created some of, I think, the Tamerlane missions, the Rise of Tamerlane missions. My bad. Um, I do apologize. You guys are all such great campaign makers that sometimes it's a bit hard for me to identify who exactly made a good campaign. Uh, but yeah, overall, very solid, very good, extremely pretty maps, uh, good gameplay, if at times grindy at some points. Um, but still, particularly, I think the first mission was the best, the early game-wise. Um, and then this third mission was the best in terms of naval combat. Um, and the second mission was the closest to a real mission, which is uh, like a... How do I say this? Like a, like a base game campaign mission in the sense that um, it was much more linear and uh, there was very little in terms of out there game mechanics, so to speak. But yeah, that was my assessment of this custom campaign. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is The Clever Fool. I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.